What I've learned so far from speaking to Bishop-elect Byrne is that number one, he is a man of great faith. Number two, he has a wonderful sense of humor. And three, he cares deeply about his own family and the families that he serves. Here's part two now of my sit-down interview with the soon-to-be 10th Bishop of Springfield. So when you think about your role as a priest and as a leader of the diocese, when you wake up in the morning and you put your feet on the ground, is there someone that you look up to, to aspire to, to say, um, I want to be more like them, I want to walk in their footsteps? Yeah, so I wake up in the morning, I make my morning offering. Like when I was uh, a seminarian in, in, at the North American College in Rome many years ago, Mother Teresa came for a visit and she spoke to us and then she was standing at the, um, at the door and we all filed by and we had our breviaries, our prayer books, and she signed them. And as people were going by, she came, my turn came up and she looked up at me and said, don't get in God's way. <laughs> she didn't say that to anybody else. <laughs> So one of the first things I always do is say, don't let me get in your way today, God. Uh, and so I, um, and I often think of my dad, who was a, a quiet guy, but uh, really moved people's hearts. He was a doctor, and when he was performing surgery, he would read, po talk about poetry or the things that he did. And, and I talked to so many nurses and after he died and doctors, and they said, I wasn't a practicing Catholic until I met your dad. Wow. And I thought, well, I want to make sure that that's a, a good model. I'm a little more talkative than he is. <laughs> <laughs> was, God bless his soul. Well, family is very important to you. And I can tell by your everything that I've heard. And um, as a little boy and growing up in Washington, D.C. area, did you, what, what did you picture your adult life being like, your adult person being like? Well, I think I was just like any other kid, you know. I had an uncle, God rest him soul, Father John Byrne, who was a priest. Uh, he's a priest. He died as a priest, of course. And, um, and so that was all in the realm. Having an uncle who's a priest makes it sort of a normative thing to do. He was a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington, and his nickname was Beefy. So you can see that <laughs> it wasn't just the priesthood we shared in common. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, but the, um, so that was one of the different options, you know, and my dad was a doctor and, um, and I have three siblings who are all uh, doctors also. So that was always sort of on the shelf until I would look at something and I would get gross. They'd be fascinated and I'd be grossed out. So I was like, <laughs> but the, the Lord started planning it, I think somewhat in high school. Um, and then in college, I was thinking about it more seriously. I talked to my mom and dad and said, uh, I was a senior, and said, I'm thinking about being a priest. And my mom said, I'd love to have a son who's a priest. I'd hate to have one who used to be a priest. <laughs> she said, so do something you've, you've never done before. And I was like sort of picturing myself sailing across the world. And I said, like what, mom? And she said, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I taught school for three years. And, um, and that was wonderful. It was the little boys Catholic school that I had gone to myself. Uh, and and up till now was the chaplain, so that was a wonderful experience. It gave me a chance to really um, begin to learn to pray. And interestingly enough, the vocations director said you need to get a spiritual director. So I asked around, and for those three years, I met with a guy named Father Tim Dolan. He's now Cardinal Dolan, wow. but he was a priest working at the nunciature. And we've been friends ever since. And God willing, he'll be at the uh, ordination and installation. You have a lot of the same similarities. Of <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> Except I'm a little better looking. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell him you said that. <laughs> so you're the youngest of eight children. Mm -hmm. um, are, is there any, are there any lessons that you've learned that you bring forward into your life now, being the youngest of eight and living with a bunch of kids in your house? Yeah, I mean, one of the things is, is when you have eight kids, it's usually two cars. So uh, if you dawdle in the, uh, uh, at the rest area or in the bathroom when you've all gone out to breakfast, there's a good chance you're going to get left. <laughs> <laughs> so if you walk out, so I think one of the... Uh, 
the is show up on time and also you don't take yourself so seriously because you think of a you're a, a part of a pack and and that's a that's a wonderful gift and my family um are all still live very close to each other and my mom praise god is still alive and living on her own at 97 and a half wow. years old so she'll be there at the ordination also when the bishop elect is ordained his coat of arms will hang in the cathedral the new crest with the motto in spam vivum or living hope the bishop's coat of arms to the right of the diocesan coat of arms consists of a paschal candle a crescent moon and the color green all symbols he chose the candle symbolizing jesus as the light of the world and the resurrection the crescent moon symbolic of the virgin mary under her title of the immaculate conception the crescent moon also appears in the coat of arms of the archdiocese of washington and in the arms of the pontifical north american college in rome bishop burns alma mater his irish heritage is reflected through the green mount Let's talk about your, your motto. How did you choose that? So I, um, I have always felt like the gifts, you get three big gifts in baptism, faith, hope, and love. And I always felt like that the gift of hope I got in a super abundance. People, uh, and hope, hope, just to clarify, isn't like, oh, I hope it doesn't rain today, like it's just wishing something to happen. Hope is the assurance from the knowledge of faith that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He's won the victory. And so he, all, all, everything else, we, we, we can't be afraid of things because we know in the end, the story will be Jesus' victory. So if we live in that, we won't sweat the small stuff and be aware of the, um, of, of the potential of each day. So the hope is something that I really feel has been a great gift that I received. And, and from that, I um, so the 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 the, uh, the line from one Peter one three is we've all been reborn into a living hope. That's it in spem vivon in a living hope through the resurrection of Christ, and that sums up the you know just because there's clouds that roll in doesn't mean the sun's not on the other side of them, and especially in this time of pandemic uh, and this time of confusion even within our own church, that's why we we need to recognize. Jesus has this in charge, and, and we have to let him be in charge. And that's what real, true theological hope is. With humor, love, and honesty, the bishop-elect talked about what his priorities would be after taking leadership of the Diocese of Springfield. Well, number one is to fall in love with the people and priests of this of Western Massachusetts. I've already, my heart is already, you know, like the Grinch, it's growing. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and I have the dog to go with it. And uh, um, so to get to know and to listen. I've always said I've been a pastor for um, uh, 22 of 26 years of priesthood. So my heart has always been in the parish with the people, um, boots on ground. Um, and I, whenever I talk to seminarians or young priests, I say, being a pastor is about 85 to 90% listening to recognize that the Holy Spirit does not just speak to me or to the priest, but is working in the hearts of every faithful who is listening and opening uh, their, their minds and heart to the Holy Spirit. So uh, I want to begin to listen. But I also feel like we have to, uh, important work is being done uh, through our independent uh, uh, task force working with the child uh, sex abuse crisis and making sure that we work towards transparency. I'm fully committed to that because we can never heal. You know, uh, our, our, our healing of the victims can't happen unless we really opened ourselves to, to, to debreeding any wounds. So transparency, working with uh, the task force to make sure that, that we make this place a, a real beacon on a hill that Western Massachusetts be a place that people can trust. And, and to that end, I, I believe strongly that we need to reestablish our own experience and trust and dialogue with those who've been disaffected. You know, it breaks my heart that so many people are, are away from the Lord because of some in his church mm -hmm. and some who've worn this collar 
Um, but so many great priests and so many wonderful shepherds have also vast majority. And so my, uh, I really wish to, in that, that living hope, uh, bring that hope to other people so they can come and see Christ anew. It sounds like you look at a, the glass half full. Well, it is. <laughs> so yeah, I do. I, I, people always say, how are you? And I say, I'm fabulous, because well, I make a decision to be fabulous. I could decide to be grumpy or I could decide to be grateful. I choose grateful over grumpy. And who could be grumpy with a dog like Sweet Zally? You should see her at the end of Mass with uh, the kids are just all there. We were at a, uh, just yesterday, blessing a pre-K program at a new uh, program at St. John the Evangelist at Agawam. And the two the little girls that were there, free K-3s, were, uh, and she's just so gentle. She's a great, my evangelization dog. I call her the Episcopop. <laughs> <laughs> the Episcopop, that's a good one. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I wish you all the best, and we're really looking forward to having you here, and can't wait for the ordination. I can't wait either, and I'm so excited to be here and to be praying and walking the journey to Christ with the folks of Western Massachusetts. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sharon.